Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Michelle is my name. If it's your first time here, hi and welcome. I uh, today I want to do a makeup look. I felt like I haven't done makeup in a while, so not in a while. Well, I did it to my second last video, but I just want to do makeup. You know, now I'm actually enjoying doing makeup content. So today we're gonna do this uh, look. A get ready with me as I chit chat away because that I can do <laughs> so let's get into it okay so we're going to start obviously with one side already done and now we're going to do this other side um, I I haven't I feel like I haven't shown you guys an eyeshadow for the longest time every time I come on the channel I've either already done my eyes or it's like a sit down video so I figured it would be fun to do one today this is not a tutorial so i'm not going to zoom you guys in i just hope you guys can at least see what i'm doing as we chat away wait is this what i used yes yes this is what i used yeah so about where i've been um i have been almost avoiding i want to say i've been avoiding um uh, youtube I've been avoiding content creation on YouTube. Um, I'm gonna go with this shade now. It's called Crimsicle. One of the best shade on this palette. I've been avoiding YouTube because um, I've just been feeling like one, I don't have the energy. Two, I don't have much to give. Um, and when I say much to give, I have found myself, obviously, when I was flying, I had, I was going to different places, so vlogs were much easier to show you guys those places. I had, I don't want to say I had time, but I feel like I had, it was kind of something that I did um, to, YouTube was basically my outlet, that's the word I was looking for outlet youtube was my outlet and i felt like i it still is even now but i just felt like then i i was more um how do i say motivated to do it i was more i felt like i needed to do youtube to kind of run away from the routine that was work and flying and everything and now i just have other things going I just have other things, you know? I have a few friends, I have family, I have church, which, you know, churches are now open, and I just feel like I have other things that keep me busy, you know? And that give me that space to not feel like, wait, what did I go in with next? Was it this? Oh, I wanna say it was this again yeah just in that area there so this is basically a three eyeshadow look we're going to use crimsicle as you've seen uh roxanne and the last one was what is this central park and that's it like we're not doing much so it seems like a it's a very easy eyeshadow look nothing much to do but it comes out really nice and really glam yeah, so what was I saying? I, I feel like I have, not, now I have so much other things kind of going, going for me. And so I don't feel like I need to escape to come on YouTube and do stuff. Because makeup, ideally, if you've watched my channel, and I think I've said this in my other video before, is that makeup became my escape when I... When us guys moved to Dubai and when I when I got into Emirates, I felt kind of lonely. I felt like I didn't have the things that I used to have when I was home. And so that made me... I started to look, to look into other things, you know. To, I'm moving on to Central Park. I started to look to other things to kind of give me joy. Um, because the things that would give me joy, which were, you know, family, friends and everything were no longer present, you know? And so 
now I just feel like do I need to do <laughs> not that do I need to do YouTube anymore but do I have much to give in terms of content you know do I have stuff to show you which let me just tell you guys content creation needs money right you need to go places and for you to go to those places to be able to create that content and show people stuff you need money you know you need to go you need to to um have like if it's a national park you need an entrance fee you i mean all of those small things this is yuck don't touch me <laughs> it's full of makeup yeah so you need stuff and without having the situation having changed to from having changed from having a job to not having a job you have to be you know just kind of aware of how you use money you're not able to just i mean things change you know and you you can't just do anything that you want to do now you have to be more conscious and i think you have to be conscious regardless of whether you have a job or you don't have a job but i think when you come to the moment where now you don't have a job it just kind of hits different you know and now you're much more cautious with what you do how you do it when you do it you know how often you do it so that's kind of where i found myself and i'm trying to navigate i'm trying to sort of find a, a balance of how to still create content and kind of have a plan now have even like a budget and even have you know people supporting you because a friend of mine told me that people actually a lot of content creators actually have well not a lot i don't know if it's a lot or not but they actually have people supporting them financially so you're able to to create more and to be to just kind of focus on the craft and not you know be financially um how do i say held back be financially um what's the word why am i losing my english uh limited that's what i was looking for so you're not financially limited i mean obviously you're still going to watch how you use your money because someone else has invested in you but it's a thing that people actually get people to invest in you so you're able to to give more and do more so yeah i'm just trying to navigate that whole thing you know trying to find i'm going back with this brush to just kind of blend everything out just trying to find ways of how I can maybe get someone to to support me with a content creation because basically what it is it's it's support and this comes from people who who believe in what you do you know and they think what you're doing is is worth the support that you know they could give so yeah that's what um it's kind of what I'm trying to figure out right now and at the same time still trying to to bring myself to to give you content that makes sense you know i've always say that on my channel is i don't want to just come on here and just give you stuff i want it to make sense which is another thing which kind of let me just um use that to maybe explain the next situation is that at times you you're just not in that mental space right um just checking where I need to add eyeshadow, which is right there. So as you can see, this look is quite easy. You just blend three shades and make sure that everything is blended. The most uh, important part is to blend, you know, just make sure everything is nicely blended so it doesn't look like three obvious shades. So what was I saying? I'm going to go with a pencil brush just to... Um, add that orange right in between so we kind of have a transition of the shades from the orange to the mustard from the mustard to the orange to the dark brown shade kind of have a nice transition there yeah so what was i saying um yeah your mental health has to be you know in the right place for you to be able to share stuff with people for you to be able to um I don't know to just kind of give content that makes sense 
I remember there was a time that I felt so burnt out. And someone was in my comments telling me, like, listen, you look like you're going through it. You know, you look like you're not fine. And when I look back, I was I actually wasn't fine. You know, everything was just everywhere. And I I honestly could not really put a finger on what it was that was making me not fine, but I just know that I wasn't. And you could tell. You could I could tell. A few people could tell, but I I could tell. I could see it through my content. And I think it's very important to to just take a step back, you know, when you need to and allow yourself to just be, you know, just exist and not have to to be under pressure to to do or give content out because people want to see it. So moving forward, even in terms of, you know, how consistent, because people want to say, you know, uh, if you don't post videos every week, you're not consistent. I think that in this day and age, with everything that we've gone through, especially, you know, someone who has moved from one country to a different country, so back home from a different country, you have so many things to figure out because we were not home for the longest time. So now there's a lot of things that you're dealing with. And at the same time, you're trying to to push out this content and to continue to be consistent that you get burnt out, you know, and so... I just said, I decided and told myself, if I'm able to do it, I will. But I'm not going to beat myself up when I don't do it. And I'm not going to, you know, always come on here and explain. If I feel I need to tell you guys what was going on, I will. If I don't, I will not. And that, that should be fine. Do you know what I mean? That should be okay. Because I say this because, you know, sometimes you get comments from people and they say stuff that can really break you to be honest and can really make you just feel like you know you're failing (laughs) and so you have to sit yourself basically i hear people say this all the time like you have to have a meeting with yourself and go i know what she said but we know what we're going through you know this is why we're going through what we're going through and this is why we're not as consistent or we're not as present and just you know tell yourself that it's okay because it is okay so that's it basically with the eye there's nothing (laughs) else to do and now i want to do the eyeliner and then uh, what else now we're going to do the makeup so with this i'm just going to pause because i'm unable to do this on camera because i'm going to be leaning forward to the mirror so much so I'll either speed this part up or I will pause you guys and come back in a sec so my face is already prepped so I'm just gonna start with concealer just a little in those areas so let's talk about the transition of how and when we moved back home uh a few just a few people asked me about how we brought things from dubai to kenya let me tell you that was a whole process because when you're moving back with stuff this is just for people who might be moving back home in fact let me start with let me just start with i don't think i've ever told you guys the story of how everything kind of happened um when like how we were told about the retrenchment and everything and how we ended up moving back home. So what had happened was, I remember on a set, I think it was Sunday. I remember it was Sunday and I, I was having lunch with some of my friends. Was it lunch? Okay. We were hanging out in the afternoon with some of my friends. And I remember having a conversation with them and going, you know, if... To be honest, if I was told to go home, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be so unhappy because at this point I was, like I told you guys in my Emirates video, is that I wasn't, I wasn't happy. If you haven't seen the video, just go have a look because I said a bunch of stuff. So I wasn't happy. So to me, I remember when the first time I heard that people were getting letters to be retrenched, I remember thinking, oh my goodness, maybe this could be my way out. (laughs) Because you know how when you're 
like when you're in a job you're very comfortable and you keep telling yourself you know what i'll resign i'll resign and you never really do so that's kind of how it was with me and i kept thinking if they actually tell me to go then i don't have to act like i resign i mean i don't have to think about oh what's gonna happen if i resign like i'm just gonna leave and so in that moment i remember telling my friends that i am actually not that scared because we were talking about it and we we're like oh you know what would you do if if you're told to leave you know are you prepared are you ready how would you feel something like that and i just remember saying i actually wouldn't be upset i i just would not be that upset sorry quick makeup tip i like to do this with my concealer to clean up the eyeshadow and the eyeliner because my eyes are, are very hooded well i don't know if i should say very the other people who are much worse than this but my eyes are hooded so every time i kind of want to create a lift you know just kind of look like snatched i do this so i do an uh, an, an eyeliner and then i i go in with um the concealer right close very close to you know just where the eyeliner is and i basically clean it up and make it as sharp as I could as I can <laughs> as I can and then later on I'll come in with so even even with the hood my eyes are still not the same like they're not hooded evenly so it's such a problem to even get them to look exactly the same but I try to and I like doing this I know I do this all the time I like doing this because I feel like it does wonders for the shape of my face you know it just creates that you know perfect eye shape perfect in my opinion so anyway um we were talking and i was just telling them like i'm ready to to kind of go you know i was i was in a good place mentally at peace with leaving emirates and leaving dubai i if you know just a little bit of history is if you haven't watched me before is i've been traveling i've been flying for like 12 years this is my 13th year and so so 20 was it 2020 was my 13th year yeah i think so so you can imagine how kind of exhausted i am with the whole not being available being away traveling so i was just telling them that i'm i'd be good like i feel like i've done enough and i'm done so after talking about this you know everyone went home and everything at around 10 p.m that's when emirates sent me the email that's when i got my email anyway i don't know what time they sent it but i i remember telling them oh by the way you guys i got the email you know the email is basically asking you to go into a meeting so they can tell you that you're fired well not fired but you've been laid off because of all of these things and so one of them actually both of them was so surprised they were like oh my goodness and we were just talking about this and i was like yeah and i'm good like i know i'm good i love this underpainting technique i'm sorry i keep switching and i will because this is a get ready with me and i can so anyway i love this technique of underpainting because you can do it's i feel like it's so easy and you're able to do so much without stressing anyway so i was i was happy i was i was well obviously i was a little apprehensive i was you know i was thinking oh my goodness so now okay what does this mean but it was more of a relief of oh my goodness okay so, you know so where do we go from here and i remember walking into that meeting and i'll maybe i think i have a clip to just show you guys that everyone was waiting outside and you know just waiting to go in some people looked sad other people looked like they did not care i remember <laughs> i remember and i hope this is not tmi but i remember one of the two of the girls who came in had no bra <laughs> i hope this is not tmi but i remember thinking wow people are really just do not care at this point people are really just doing what they want and yeah basically guys some people were like you know whatever you know Psst, yeah so what we're going home i can do whatever i want at this point point. and they were quite you know they had this procedure where you had to go and kind of say 
I'm here for the 11 o'clock meeting or 10 o'clock, whatever you had. And then sit down and then wait kind of your turn to be called like a batch. And then there were people, the whole time, there were people sort of directing you and almost like watching you so you don't do anything crazy. This is my opinion. This is what it felt like. It felt like they were basically watching you. So Because this building was a building known to us. It was the Emirates Training College. So we knew our way around. We didn't exactly need someone there to tell us, you know, go here, go there. But there was, nonetheless. So I kind of felt like it was to sort of like check you. You know, what are you doing? Sorry, just a sec. Yeah, so I I felt like it was kind of like to, to just make sure you're not trying to do something crazy. You know, not, not that I'm happy to even talk about this, but maybe some people could have been a little suicidal and that would, you know, that wasn't good just in general, you know, it's not good for someone to take their lives. But I think, I think they were trying to, to just be careful so that people don't do crazy stuff, which I mean, I guess I understand because a lot of people did not want to get laid off. So you can imagine in that moment of desperation, that's the stuff that people could have done. So anyway, you go into your meeting and sit with your manager Surprisingly, I had a new manager because my manager had just been let go as well. Like a month, maybe even three weeks or less before that. So you sit in this, my skin. Hmm. I don't like how my skin looks in this area. Anyway, so you sit in this meeting and then and then basically you, you know, they tell you this is what you're entitled to. You know, you should book your, the tickets that you have that are open for free or whatever. You should, um, what else were they asking? I don't know. I don't remember. But just a bunch of stuff, you know. And then after that, she escorts you to the lift. So that's kind of the protection part that I was saying. You know, they don't just let you walk out because... Maybe because they were trying to be nice, you know, walk you out. But also maybe because they were not trying to let you be on your own. So you can jump over, you know, kill yourself or something. I don't know. But yeah, either way, it was nice. Let me just, you know, let me not be, I'm not trying to be like, oh, they shouldn't have done it. Either way, I think it was nice that they walked you out. My manager seemed very confused <laughs> that I was not sad. She just was like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. It's like, okay, you're taking this so well. And I was like, um, there is nothing, there's no other way you could take it. At this point, they've already decided that, you know, you're going home. So just keep your head up and go home in peace. So coming to now trying to figure out First of all, what to use to send your things back home because Emirates gives you, um, they give you a, a concession ticket, travel, you know, cargo concession ticket, which was about 300 kilos, depending on how. So for me, depending on how long, if you've been in Emirates five years and above, you get 300. Um, if you've been below that, you get 200 and then it just changes as it goes. So... Yeah, so I got the 300 and obviously they, they, um, what is it called? <laughs> Wait, I lost train of thought. This is foundation. I'm using my usual Maybelline uh, Fit Me. No, Maybelline Super Stay full coverage. Um, so that is full coverage. See that? That covers all of your blemish all of your sins, <laughs> all of your problems. Uh, what was I saying? So basically the concession is for you to ship out your stuff home. There's a whole procedure of, you know, how you have to declare what you have, say everything that you have in terms of like dimensions or was it weight? I, th I, I know I had to sit on a computer and do like a, I think dimensions or stuff. Yeah, 
I remember that part. But that's when you're taking your stuff in. But before that, depending on the country that you're from, which mine is Kenya, obviously, if, I mean, hopefully you know that by now, um, I had to kind of declare everything so I can get a customs um, exemption when I get home. Because usually, I mean, at least since the stuff was yours and you had used it in a different country, it was bought in your name and used for use in your house. It's not commercial. Uh, they should give you basically an exemption so you don't have to pay tax for, you know, stuff that you probably already paid tax for or, you know, just because you lived out of the country because basically you are an expatriate in that country. So you have to declare everything. Like say I have seven spoons, ten pans, you know, stuff like that. Like my bed is this. Um, I've had it for this number of years. My TV's this make and this size and, you know, and imagine doing that for everything in your house <laughs> because you need i mean so when you get to your country you don't get charged for customs so i got in touch with a company that was basically a logistics company which was godsend i mean honestly even how i got them was very weird when i was going to oh so i skipped a part there's um um, you have to take back all your uniforms to so everything, pajamas, shoes, um, your bags, the ones that they gave you and basically everything except I think your hat. I don't remember if we had to, no, I don't think so because I still have, I think I have my hat somewhere. So yeah, so as I went to take the stuff back, I met this Kenyan lady and she's the one who was receiving my uniform and I remember her telling me like, um, make sure you declare everything make sure because ideally i had no clue that i was supposed to do all of that so she said you know make sure you declare everything and send it through salia um not salia and send it through to a logistics company so they can clear it with customs in kenya so that by the time you arrive you're not doing it yourself because i think the one thing that people do not know is they think that when they get to kenya they're going to just come in and then clear and then pay for whatever and then go but it becomes such a long process if you try to do it, first of all, if you try to do it yourself. And second, if you try to start declaring stuff when it's already in. So yeah, that's one thing that I, that I learned. And I'm so glad that I met her. She doesn't even know that she was completely sent. And this is why I, I always say like my steps have forever been ordered of God. Because how this happened and how I just you know, found her, I could have gone to any other person and how she, she, I don't even know what we're talking about. And this just came up and she, she thought to tell that to me, you know, to say that to me, I honestly, me. Oh, <laughs> okay. So my husband says this lady has always been mean, which, you know what? I was trying not to say it in this video, but the, the times that we want, like we want to change uniform and stuff like that she wasn't the friendliest she wasn't like the nicest person so why i say it's a miracle is because she wasn't the nicest you know it, it wasn't something that i expected her to do it wasn't something that i expected from her so when when she was nice enough to you know like oh so you're going home and and you know say all of these things and offer all of these advices basically advice all of this advice i I was taken aback. I was taken aback. I was really shocked. Um, and I wasn't, I just was not expecting that. And in retrospect, I feel like God put her there for me. Because had she not told me, I probably wouldn't have done all of that. And then by the time I got to Kenya, things would have been messy. And I wasn't ready. Emotionally, I wasn't ready to deal with with all of the things that customs probably would have put me through because I was <laughs> I was tired. I was emotionally emotionally tired. In fact, leading up to to getting the letter, I remember feeling, you know how everyone was on lockdown and in Dubai we had a whole two weeks, was it two or three, of complete lockdown. Like you cannot leave your house. If you go to the store you need a permit. If you like it was so intense. And so you can imagine staying home with nothing like your family's first of all you're afraid that people could be sick in your country 
you know, and your your family is far away from you. And then all this uncertainty and being told you cannot leave your house was making it 10 times worse because you want to be able to go somewhere, you know, relax, go have dinner. All the restaurants were closed. The mall was closed. So even buying stuff was like a problem. And I was already mentally shaken and exhausted. And I was kind of going through something. Like I said, in my other videos, I would sometimes notice that I would kind of be zoning out. And I, you know, going through all of that, I can only imagine what I would feel if I came home and then there's all of these custom things that I feel I'm not able to deal with. So yeah. So see how much foundation is left? Like when you do the underpainting, you really save makeup. You really save on your foundation because you don't need a whole lot, honestly. So yeah. So anyway, this lady was amazing. God sent her. I really believe that God did send her even though she, you know, she she was what she was but that day she was something else and she was nothing short of an angel a miracle uh, a servant of god she was used of him so anyway back to now we gave out the uniform and everything and now we are trying to send things back home so i found this logistics company who basically after sending them all of those things which was exhausting and so much documentation you know you have to give uh your pin number you have to give your pin certificate you have to give obviously your passport details and all of these other things and it was exhausting <laughs> and eventually everything was done thank god because they helped me there's so many processes that you need to do with regards to uh i think applying for with kra or something like that uh so doing all of that and then at least you know having someone doing it for you because back in dubai you have to get a mover company you know get movers basically and then pack your stuff up they will help you to pack but you just want to know where your things are because when you get home at least you want to just kind of have an idea of what is going on so yeah that that was that and then um so we moved back home the process in Kenya was easy. I just came, gave out my passport, and they basically did everything. The stuff was loaded onto a truck and delivered straight to my doorstep. Straight. They even carried the stuff into the house. So I had, obviously I had to pay extra for that, but I had no stress in terms of going to pick it up, speaking to customs. Like, I had no business for that. So that was good. I was grateful for that. But all in all, you know, you get home and then, so now you have to start this whole, kind of start your life afresh almost, you know, because you had left and things have changed since you left. Your friends have changed. People have moved away. People have, you know, got married and you were not present. They got kids. So I've kind of found myself in a different mind space. Um, I'm now back to feeling that I, you know, I had said in a video that I, you know, obviously we haven't had kids and now this, this year will be our 11th year of marriage. And so now I feel like I'm settled enough to want to have children. Does that make sense? Before I felt I wasn't available, you know, even physically, like I wasn't. I wasn't in one place, so how was I going to raise a child in that situation? But now I feel like I'm much more present, you know, and it's it's sort of making me feel a little broody, <laughs> feel that I may want to have children again, but you know, we'll see. This feeling, Loki just does what it wants. One day it's there. The next minute it's gone so i'm not even gonna say like oh it's here now and then you know i'm just gonna let it do what it wants <laughs> just going to kind of go with the flow well all right then okay so this is the final look i just went in with some random lipstick and no lashes i decided to do mascara today i have this sample 
that I got from Fendi a while ago because I really wanted to try their mascara but I did not want to commit to a big size and let me tell you this mascara is good it's full frontal volume lift and curl mascara is the best no really it's I used to love Maybelline I used to love these ones these ones which are still very good but I'm just saying this one is giving these ones a run for their money anywho that is the end of this video I just wanted us to kind of touch base and you know just uh, connect you know be nowhere we are with each other <laughs> so that you guys can know where I'm at also if you haven't subscribed to my channel please consider subscribing this is the kind of content that I give and like I said I am not your most consistent youtuber but I I do try and I do try to bring you content that actually makes sense which reminds me if you haven't watched my previous video which was with Pascal the hairstylist please check it out if you want to know anything about hair it, he's very good in just kind of explaining the science behind the hair and what we need to do so if you'd like to you know if you like that kind of content please check out that video I'll link it at the end of this video or somewhere on the screen um, yeah so for now love you and leave you and i will see you guys on my next one goodbye god bless you